Hello, I'm Paul Weston. Now, after two years of COVID insanity in the West, we've now got several new crises to deal with. Uh, we've got rampant inflation, uh, coming food shortages and fuel shortages, monkeypox, a mystifying confusion about XX and XY chromosomes, and a strange war in Ukraine, which appears to be a proxy war between uh, nuclear-armed America and nuclear-armed Russia. And I say it's a strange war because no one seems remotely interested in stopping it, uh, no matter that it could lead to literal Armageddon. And I think this is because Putin can be blamed for some of the deliberately engineered crises we're currently experiencing, uh, so don't expect it to end soon. And our armchair warrior political class seems more than happy uh, to supply weapons to prolong the inevitable, and they are valiantly prepared to fight uh, to the very last surviving Ukrainian. The way they treat us, I feel as though we no longer exist as human beings in the eyes of our uh, sort of political overlords. We're now just cattle being herded towards a horrendous future by a small number of immensely powerful individuals and global organisations who have made no secret of the future they want to build for us. So this global coup d'etat, it's driven by lies and corruption at every single level of our national and international institutions. Nothing we've been told over the last couple of years is true. It's all lies. Uh, for example, over the last 30 years in England and Wales, an average 1.2% of the population died every year. It's completely normal. It's uh, it, it just completely normal. And the vast majority of them, of course, because it's normal, are old and ill. So that's 1.2% died over the last 30 years on average every year. In 2020, the year of the alleged COVID-19 killer pandemic, just 1% of the population died. And again, the vast majority were old and ill. Yet despite experiencing a lower than average death rate in 2020, a COVID-19 emergency was declared, uh, which saw the biggest power grab by the state over the lives of its citizens since the dictatorships of Lenin, Hitler and Mao. And the most chilling aspect of this totalitarian coup was that Western countries acted in unified lockstep as they tore up every tried and trusted historical public health protocol uh, related to airborne viruses and replaced them with a tyranny that had no basis at all in medical or scientific reality. Now, some people recognised what was happening and they publicly protested. And what happened? They were met with state-enforced paramilitary brutality never previously seen in the West. Uh, in Australia, uh, rubber bullets were used against peaceful protesters. In Canada, Justin Trudeau invoked the War Measures Act to, uh, to, to beat and batter uh, protesters, pauperise the peaceful protesters and... Why? Because they preferred to live their lives according to the Nuremberg Code rather than Trudeau's Mengele Code. Even worse, in New Zealand, uh, huge posters of a beaming Jacinda Ardern uh, were ruthlessly displayed on advertising hoardings across the country. Uh, what a wicked thing to do. Now, the biggest issues I can see in all of this criminal insanity are twofold. Uh, firstly, and most importantly, our ruling class now know they can do whatever they want to us if they terrorise us sufficiently, as in carry out acts of genuine terrorism against their own citizens in order to achieve a political ambition. That's what terrorism is, deliberately inculcating fear to achieve a political ambition. Uh, secondly, uh, we now know exactly what they want to do to us because they meet up in Davos every year and shamelessly talk about it in very loud voices. And their power is immense. And for the first time in history, they have the ability to build a revolutionary new society without having to carry out violent street revolutions that we've all seen in the past. So all they need today is electronic data and digital IDs linked to a a government-controlled central bank digital currency, which all Western governments are currently implementing. 
So COVID-19, mass vaccinations and digital COVID passes, and, and, and for the passes, don't think they've been consigned to history because they haven't. Uh, they were all, of course, a necessary precondition to a uh, digi-tyranny. You know, you have to have that coming in first to get the electronic state up and running. And Western governments are also working on legislation to silence dissent on social media and stifle physical public protest. And new ministries of truth are being formed, which will disappear and memory hole any written and spoken words which our ruling class considers to be misinformation or disinformation. Now, this is Orwell's 1984, and it's happening before our very eyes. So who are the people or the organisations enacting this totalitarian Western coup? Well, it's primarily the World Economic Forum, uh, the United Nations, the World Health Organisation, particularly the World Health Organisation, uh, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the EU, big tech social media, the pharmaceutical industry, the entire Western political class and three gargantuan financial institutions uh, called BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street, which pretty much own every single company, every single thing in the world. They own a controlling interest in it, including the mainstream media. Uh, and, of course, a handful of monumentally wealthy billionaires, uh, including Soros and Gates. And the concerted power and wealth held by all of the above has completely corrupted politics and science, journalism, the judiciary, academia, and most tragically, medicine. And there are still some brave souls from these professions who risk their careers by speaking out, but you will never see them via the mainstream media or on the biggest social media platforms. And those we are allowed to see are simply bought and paid for propagandists who tell us nothing other than the, re than the revolutionary line. Now, I'm 58 years old. I was born a long time after World War II, and my entire life, uh, up until 2020 at least, was one of unimaginable ease and freedom compared to most humans who have ever lived. But the freedom I enjoyed is over now, and our future could be very grim indeed. Another pandemic will soon be coming our way, and I suspect this one will be necessarily much more lethal than the last. And also coming our way are ever-rising interest rates to counter the deliberately engineered inflation. And if these interest rates get anywhere near double figures, let alone over double figures, and they were 17% back in the 1980s, uh, if they get anywhere near that, then the average earning mortgage holder will simply lose their house immediately. And uh, then the manufacture of petrol and diesel cars will soon be phased out. And if you want to keep it on the road, uh, you'll have to pay extortionate taxes. Uh, air travel for the masses is not part of the New World Order green agenda, and nor apparently is heating our homes with our repossessed homes with, uh, with oil or gas. Now, these people have told us what they want. They tell us every year what they want, a smaller population, a, a lower carbon footprint, a digital ID, surveillance, uh, social credit state, capable of bending us to their political will, their dictatorial will, and no more meat, uh, just bugs. Lots and lots of delicious bugs. And the apparatchiks of the green New World Order <laughs> will be slightly different to us. They will have their private jets and their beachside mansions and their haunches of venison and their champagne, whilst we will own nothing, uh, which I rather suspect will fail to induce uh, delirious happiness, whatever Herr Schwab might purportedly believe. Now, can they achieve this publicly off-stated agenda? Yes, they can. They simply have to continue doing what they are already doing, although it will probably need to be substantially ramped up, hence my belief that another pandemic is on the cards. And in America, they have the problem of gun ownership in the hands of ordinary citizens. So I think we'll see a huge efforts by means more foul than fair to urgently rectify this problematic issue for the new world order. 
It's not all doom and gloom though. Well, not really. They have shown their hand, and despite their seemingly limitless power and wealth, there are only a few thousand of them, only a few hundred at the very top, whilst there are literally billions of us. Now, I see our future as one of only two genuinely credible possibilities, freedom for us and jail for life for them, uh, or slavery for us and even bigger yachts, jets and sizzling stakes for them. So it's up to us, in other words, and the very first thing the average person needs to do is to wake up before it's too late.